kids, hi, I'm Pastor Joy, and I wanted to ask you a question today. Can I know God? Can you know God? Can we know God? It's a big question, I mean, can we know him like a friend? Is he just too far away and too big? Can anybody know God? You know, there are a lot of people who would have you think that it's not possible for you to know God. Isn't that sad? But you know what? It's true. In fact, did you know that there was a guy that God knew really well? In fact, he was called a friend of God. Now, have you ever thought about what it would be like to be God's friend? Well, this guy was God's friend, and he didn't exactly hang out with God. I mean, I mean, not in the same way that you hang out with your BFF, but they were BFFs, and they did hang together. In fact, David hung out with God in a lot of the same ways you hang out with your BFF. I mean, they talked all the time, and God spoke to him, and... He sang songs about him. He was a worshiper and he wrote songs. And you know, all of the Psalms, most of those were written by David, God's friend about him. But David was also a journaler. Is anybody out there a journaler? I've done some journaling in my life. Have you done some journaling? Well, David was a journaler and he wrote, I mean, the songs, songs and journaling, talking to God about everything that was going on the good stuff, the bad stuff. Even when God caught him in some bad stuff, he wrote about it and he prayed and he talked to God like a BFF. You know, God could talk to him about the things that were wrong about him and they were still best friends. What about that? Hey, David. Hey, God. Uh, you know, I see everything, right? You do? Really? Yep. So is there anything you want to tell me about ha what happened with you and your brother today? No. You don't want to tell me about smacking him with your staff? No. Hmm. David, you know, one day you're going to be in charge of a lot of sheep. I mean, a lot. I am? Yep. And you and I are going to talk a lot about those sheep and what happens with them. Well, we talk a lot now. Yes, we do. David, I need you for you to pay close attention to me. Follow me closely and know me really well because you're going to depend on me for everything. Wow. I guess I probably shouldn't have hit my brother with this staff. No, but he really makes you mad, right? Yes, he does. But I should really treat him better, shouldn't I? Yup, he's your brother. So, God? Yep. Can I be king someday? Hmm, we'll see about that. Okay, so let's read an example of one of David's communications with God. And we'll find a lot of that in the psalm. See, David, again, he was a worshiper. He was a journaler. He was a writer. But let's just look at one of the things that he wrote down. Now, he wrote this when there was an army after him. And guess who was leading that army? His son, Absalom. His son, Absalom, raised up an army against his dad. I mean, they were going to kill him. But David wrote this. He wrote, God, look how many people are my enemies and they're rising against me. So many people are saying of me that even you can't save me. But I know you, God. You have your shield all about me. You are my glory and you lift my head. When I pray to you, you answered my prayer all the way from heaven. And when I went to sleep, I woke up again because you kept me alive. I will not be afraid of the large crowds of people who are against me because God, get up, save me, God. You will punch all of my enemies and you'll break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation 
belongs to you, God, and your blessing is on your people. You know, if we could write to God, if we could talk to God exactly the way that we're, we're, we're thinking about, you know, the Bible doesn't actually say you punch my enemies, but it says words that are like that. It doesn't actually say you'll break, it does actually say you'll break the teeth of the wicked. I mean, David poured it all out so that God would know him, but it was because he knew that God knew him. God knew David and he knows you. Do you know why? Do you know how he knows you? He knows you because he made you. He knew you before he made you and put you into your mother's belly. You know that? God knew you before that and he made you exactly the way he intended you to be made. You know, John 17, three says this, and John's talking to, to everyone. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, who you have sent, that we would know Jesus Christ. Hey, that's it today, guys. But let's go out and pretend, not just pretend, but that we would know that God knows us. Act like that. Talk to him like that. I mean, until he is your BFF, talk to him like he is your BFF. It's pretty simple. You just talk to him like a friend. Let's pray. God, we can know you. And once we know that that is true and that is sure, it helps us, God. It helps us to know that you know us, that we can be known, and that we can find out more about you when we read your word, when we pray, when we talk to you. You talk to us. You do take care of us. You do watch over us. God, I pray that you would be with every kid who's listening today. I pray that you would help them to know you. Help them to know that you see them. Help them to know, God, that you are ordering their steps. Help them to know that they can know you like a BFF. Thank you, God, for that. Amen.